Hi there. When we built our house a couple of years ago, we knew that we'd want a patio in our backyard. So we had this 18 foot one put in. Uh, we didn't know what we'd do with it at the time, but we did know we'd want a patio. It was exposed to the sun for the better part of the day, only getting shady in the very late afternoon. We tried a couple of different umbrellas, but it still just didn't seem comfortable back there. And so we decided to build this. Stick around, I'll show you how we did it. I designed it in such a way that I could use 10 foot long rafters. That meant they could be two befores. That also would allow me to use 10 foot long metal. I wanted it to feel open as possible, so I didn't want any more posts than I had to have. If I put one on each corner, that meant that I had to come up with a way to build an 18 foot long beam. Each beam would consist of three pieces of three quarter inch plywood. They would be cut in such a way that they would equal the distance that I needed, in this case, 18 feet long. I would sandwich those pieces of plywood between an upper and lower two before with a groove cut in it that would accommodate those pieces of plywood. Here are a couple of images of those beams in process. Here are a couple of beams ready to be installed. At this point, I've added the diagonal pieces on both sides of the beams. It just gives it more strength and makes them really rigid. I've also glued all these pieces on there so everything is glued and screwed. At this point, we have stained them and sealed them and they're ready to go. Now it was time to prepare the posts. I notched the tops of them in such a way that the beams would have a nice place to sit and allow me to attach them very well. Since I was working off of a level patio and knowing that I wanted to go about 36 inches into the ground, I was able to determine the lengths of the post. I created a notch around the base of them so that the post would be very difficult to pull out. I then cut and chipped away the corners of concrete so that the post would have a place to go and then I started digging the holes. I dug the holes with a larger bottom than the top so that the post would have a very difficult time pulling out. When it came time to move the post from the garage around the house to the back porch, I had to improvise, so I enlisted my good friend Massey. I knew exactly how deep the post had to go into the ground, so I attached some temporary boards to the bottom so that when I set them in place with the tractor, they'd be at the correct height. After plumbing and stabilizing the post, then came the fun part, mixing the concrete. I put about four 80-pound bags in each hole. Once the concrete around the post had set, it was time to move the beams around to the backyard. Once again, I enlisted my good friend Massey. She didn't have the reach that she needed to put the beams in place, so I had to improvise again. Unfortunately, I didn't have any video of the entire project, except for this that was taken with one of my security cameras. You can see that it took a lot of finagling backwards and forwards with that tractor to get that thing positioned just right to where it needed to go. It takes me a few minutes, but I do eventually get it. As I would put the beams up into place, I would secure each end using screws similar to the way shown here. Now that the beams were up and secured, started the real challenges. I had to hold this 30 inch square 2x6 framework up in the sky while trying to attach it to the hip rafters. I knew the approximate height that it should be, so I supported it with long 2x4s. I finished all the hip rafters and started on the common rafters. I had to use a ratchet strap to keep the thing twisted and straight with the rest of the framework. I continued working my way around putting on all the common rafters until finally I had them all on there. As I put them on, I glued them where they sat on top of the beam and also screwed them in place. I decided to use two befores for the purlins. That way the screws for the metal roof would not penetrate through and show from the bottom side. When it came to installing them, I was able to enlist some help. 
With all the purlings installed on the lower sections of the roof, it was time to start on the center pop-out area. I built it using 4x4s for the corners that were notched on the top and bottoms. On the bottom end, they would attach to that 2x6 by 30 inch square framework that I mentioned earlier. I attached the top of the 4x4s to another 30 inch framework that I fabricated using 2x4s. On top of the 2x4 framework, I would set the rafters that were also fabricated using 2x4s. This is the only image I have of the completed framework with us getting ready to put on the metal. The metal roofing that I used comes in 36 inch wide pieces. Each side of my roof would require seven different pieces. Most suppliers, when they quote something like this, they would quote those links as square cut on each end, meaning you would lose a triangular piece off of each link. I determined, however, that if I bought all 10 foot long pieces, the cutoff of one side would work on another side as shown and represented by the different colors in this image. All that was left to get it in the dry was to put on the ridge caps. I had to be a little bit creative again, but it got the job done. I have to say it was a little bit scary. At this point, I've done all the wiring and installed the lights around the perimeter, and here I'm installing the framework to support a ceiling fan. Also, I wanted to mention that all the framework in the roof was pre-stained and sealed before I ever put it up there. That made the work a lot easier. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today. Hope it's been entertaining and informative for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Also, I would appreciate it very much if you would subscribe. Thanks again for watching.